Rajesh, take us through what you see on ground. We see uh, thick smoke blowing that residential area in Kiev. What has happened? Look, if you can see behind me right now, the fire has been more or less doused, but they are still working on it. Fire tenders are still working full time, and the, there is still smoke and steam coming out of the building. This is the state right now. This is after four hours of continuous effort to douse this fire. This is the state right now. Look, still black smoke blowing there on top of the building and the fire tenders working. This is a state after these firefighters have been trying their best for the last four hours. This building was hit about four and a half hours back. Look, that black smoke coming still there. Rajesh, uh, this is a smoke from that same building or are attacks happening even as we speak? Have you heard of any shelling or uh, strikes in the last few hours? Look, I, I've, I've been in this place for the last 45 minutes now. We were the first one. I was the first one to reach here. Much before any international media could reach, these people are just arriving or arrived just half an hour back. So we were the first one to reach here. And when I was reporting from here on Ashtak and on India Today, I heard three, four more blasts in near vicinity, maybe about three kilometers. And these blasts are definitely inside Kiev city, probably on the outskirts. But Kiev is now being targeted. Look, another blast we could hear. This was another blast if you heard just two seconds back when I was talking to you. Right. So blasts the, the, are now being heard inside the Kiev city at a regular interval. This is what uh, is, and that's why I escalation. ask you, Rajesh, that's why the question is relevant here still. that uh, Is this deliberate target? We're looking at residential areas now being targeted. Is it deliberate attempts by the Russian forces to deter people uh, and Ukrainians, of course, uh, from resisting this... Uh, uh, this approach from the Russian forces. They're trying to enter a uh, capital city of Kiev. They do not want resistance, but unfortunately, they're faced with one. Look, I cannot say is it deliberate or not. It could be uh, a, a lack of precision in the munition. It could be just, uh, you know, or information that some kind of uh, military personnel or militia is being housed in this building, or it could be deliberate. It could be to put pressure on Ukrainians so that they come to the negotiation table so that talks progress as the Russians want. It could be anything, Nabila. It's impossible to guess, to know what exactly is happening. We can just make an informed analysis and this could be any of these four probabilities I've just told you. Right. Uh, you know, Rajesh, uh, Ukrainians, many civilians are basically taking up arms and ammunition and standing up for their country. They're all doubling up as soldiers. So it, it could be uh, slightly uh, confusing and concerning, of course, uh, for the Russian forces. Uh, while they attack these residential establishments, they're, they, they're of course, uh, probably uh, looking at the fact that civilians care no less. They are now fighting for their country, so they are equal to soldiers. So an attack will not matter to them. Look, uh, I don't know how much Russia values this or Russian forces are uh, taking this factor into consideration. But I must say the spirits of the people here are really high. Ukrainian peoples, I I'm really impressed with the kind of spirit, the kind of patriotism they have displaced. It's a big salute to their spirit. And a lot of people are ready to fight till the end here. And that's what I've been witnessing all around. How much difference will it make to the Russian army or their 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 tactics, I can't say, but on ground, yes, definitely, people are willing to fight. Young people, old people, I've seen 65, 70, almost 70-year-old people standing on check posts with a rifle in hand. And I, it's really, really very touching moments. And it's a big salute to their spirit and their patriotism. Nabila. Well, certainly a big uh, salute to their spirit. Undoubtedly, they are fighting for their country, giving up on their, uh, their families. Many of them have moved out. Uh, women, children have uh, in large numbers ev been evacuated. They have fled from that country. The men have stayed behind. It's not just the men. Many, many women also, uh, Ukrainian women who have stayed behind, taken up arms to only fight and stand for their country in this dark, dark hour. Uh, you know, we know that uh, Russian forces have encircled the... Uh, the capital city of Kiev, They're, they've come very, very close. In your assessment, how far are they, Rajesh? Uh, how long do you think for the Russian troops will take to come and capture Kiev formally? Look, Nabila, this is the northwest part of the city where I'm standing right now. And this is pretty close to the area of Irpin, Gospomol, and Bucha, the area which has witnessed heavy fighting in the last eight days. And Russian progress... Though slow, but have been making progress continuously in these areas. 
and my reading now as the war has is entering the suburbs now on the outskirts of city proper i think irpin bucha and gustom all this whole complex is more or less under russian control now we are not allowed to go that side but it appears that they're pretty close see there's another blast if you could hear these blasts are inside the city now i'm hit. these blasts you could hear in irpin or in uh, bucha or in in um, brovery but now inside the city this blast is a regular affair and you can hear them at a regular interval so the war is coming closer and closer inching closer and closer because the progress is slow because the stiff resistance of the ukrainian army but it is making progress those a bit slow probably slower than what russians expected and they are coming closer to the city nabila you know it's not just the ukrainians and their courage that we want to lord rajesh we really want to uh, lord your courage and bravery as you stand there in that war torn area of uh, kiev uh, we are looking at bombs that are taking place right behind you the sounds that you bring to us uh, we are shuddering right here it's such uh, spine chilling visuals and noises that are coming from behind you uh, really lord your courage for standing there and bringing us this factual report really appreciate it uh, we really hoping that you are safe is there a way for people who want to flee from that area who are currently troubled and worried about their uh, their safety for them to leave uh, that capital city of kiev is there a way is there a corridor a green corridor that has been decided upon as today bombarding and blasting has begun in kiev look nabila uh, is very much possible uh, our team yesterday left uh, from kiev in a train towards lviv so there a lot of people are still leaving and you'll be surprised and it's amazing metro service which stopped totally on the second day of the war has resumed though in a very limited way between few stations only but it has resumed um, i don't know how to read that move but it has resumed and whatever people are left behind are trying to fight back trying to live as normally as possible and they look organized things are changing on a human level also it's not just the war you know the old people are standing and they are not willing to go despite of their their children telling them to leave the city they are not willing to go the human angle of this war the humanitarian angle of this war is amazing the way it's unfolding right now there are heartbreaking scenes of people crying and lo loss of any kind of uh, hope in their eyes with which is really heartbreaking small children suffering but on the other side it is the human side which is bravery people say this is our house and we will fight absolutely your observations here uh, is something that india today has been of course uh, saying from day one many of those ukrainian citizens they are really uh, putting up such courage to stand for their country in this deepest darkest hour you see residential buildings there as rajesh shows us this is right behind him uh, where a residential building was bombed uh, bombs currently uh, being striked at the national capital of kiev we are looking at strikes and uh, sounds that are coming in constantly in the last few hours it seems like russian troops as they've encircled the capital city of kiev they have now upped their attack and offensive on their target number 1 kiev now india today has been constantly on this reportage from day 1 all our reporters on ground bringing us all those details from that war torn zone ground zero it's day 20 of this russian assault on ukraine that continues in the capital city of kiev